Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on uh, Sunday the 6th of September, the 13th uh, Sunday after Trinity. Uh, our service this week uh, follows the Church of England's common worship liturgy and it occurs to me to say that if you want to follow the liturgy uh, you can find it on the Church of England website if you go to the home page and uh, look for the links to prayer during the day. Uh, there's also an app that you can download uh, which will give you morning prayer every day of the week with the readings for that day already included. Uh, and again there are links to that from the C of E website or from any of the the online app stores where you normally uh, download your apps. So our service is morning prayer uh, according to common worship and our psalm today uh, is a selection of verses from Psalm 119, Psalm 119 uh, beginning at verse 17. Our Bible readings are from the book of Jonah in the Old Testament and the book of Revelation in the New Testament. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 119, beginning at the 17th verse. O do good to your servant that I may live, and so shall I keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with fervent longing for your judgment. You have rebuked the arrogant Cursed are those who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke, for I have kept your testimonies. Rulers also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. For your testimonies are my delight, they are my faithful counsellors. My soul cleaves to the dust. O oh, give me life according to your word. I have acknowledged my ways and you have answered me. O oh, teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments and so shall I meditate on your wondrous works. 
My soul melts away in tears of sorrow. Raise me up according to your word. Take from me the way of falsehood. Be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth and your judgments have I laid before me. I hold fast to your testimonies. O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments when you have set my heart at liberty. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jonah, uh, beginning in chapter 3 at the 10th verse. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, as they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and it perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 220,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Old Testament canticle is a song of David. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. Blessed are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever, for yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. 
you're exalted as head over all. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar that is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are following the common worship liturgy, you'll notice that it says at this point, the readings may be followed by a time of silence. strikes me particularly today because as we heard in that vision of heaven in uh, the revelation to St John, there was half an hour of silence in heaven as the Lamb opened the seventh scroll. In all the richness, uh, in all the continual worship day and night, that time of silence may have been a great respite, or a great time of mystery and pondering. But it seems to me sometimes the only response we can make. We've heard in our Psalms and in the tale of Jonah, the difficulty that we as humans have living the way God would have us live. It has been said that scripture as a whole from Genesis to Revelation is a love letter of God to humanity. And it seems that we may not always be willing to read and inwardly digest the truth of that love letter. We rail against it, we try our best and we fail to heed the commandments of God. And maybe Sometimes the appropriate response for all our striving is to stop and to be silent in the presence of God. To hear from him rather than to voice our continual petitions to him. I've been listening to Coral Evensong on Radio 3 throughout lockdown and recently, as some of you may know, that has come from St Martin in the Fields in London. And in a recent episode, uh, Sam Wells, the vicar of St. Martin in the Fields, described evening prayer, even song, as an hour immersed in God. Maybe this morning, uh, rather than say much more in response to our scripture, we'll take some silence to immerse ourselves in God, to come before his presence in the silence of our hearts.
the Benedictus. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we now make our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope. For a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious Lord, as we come to the start of this day, we acknowledge that all we have is of you. You are the God who brings day from night light from darkness, order from chaos, even life from death. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And so we acknowledge the gift of this day. We receive it humbly, and we offer it back to you in your service, in the service of your church and your kingdom in this place. Cover the work of our hands today, good Lord. Direct the steps of our feet, inspire the thoughts of our minds and shape the desires of our hearts for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this beautiful and broken world which you have gifted to us. This world which delights and feeds and nurtures us. Praise you for the beauty of the creation we see around us, for the ripening of the harvest, for colour and sound, for sunshine and gentle rain. And at the same time, Lord, we acknowledge the damage we have done to the beauty of your creation. The ways in which we have exploited the resources of this planet. The disparity that exists between those who have much and those who have nothing. We acknowledge and lament the ways we have damaged our relationships with one another and with creation. We pray for places throughout your world where violence, pollution, corruption and greed spoil the lives of our brothers and sisters. 
and we pray for peace and reconciliation and right ways of living. Stir our hearts, good Lord, to act differently, to live more simply, that others may simply live. Give us a new zeal for the great responsibility that has been placed upon us to steward this creation. Show us how we may respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations throughout the world all who carry the heavy burden of leadership, decision-making, responsibility for the welfare of others. We pray for your spirit of compassion to come upon them afresh. We pray for outward-looking vision that encompasses the many rather than takes a narrow view. We pray for the prospering of all cooperative relationships across the world, for agencies and bodies that promote harmonious living. And in this land, Lord, we pray for our own government, for the Prime Minister and his cabinet, that in the daily decisions they must take, uh, they would have the mind of Christ, would look to the needs of the most vulnerable, would be bold in the things they believe to be right and humble in the decisions that need to be changed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your holy church in every land. And we pray particularly for those of our brothers and sisters in Christ who worship under the shadow of persecution in dangerous situations that threaten life and livelihoods. We pray for all those without access to scripture those who are not free to gather and those who pastor in the most demanding of environments. Lord, as we pray in solidarity with the persecuted church, may they know your presence by your spirit through our common bond. We pray for the church in this diocese and especially for Bishop Peter as he continues his treatment for leukemia. Comfort and uphold him and his family and friends. Thank you for the wisdom and skill of those who are treating him and caring for him. And bring him back, we pray, to full health. We pray for Bishop Ruth in the new responsibilities she is now bearing and for all who minister and serve the life of the church in so many varied ways across this diocese. Here in our own benefice, we give you thanks for the ministry team, for David, Richard, Janet, Jill and Peter and for all those who lead and serve the life of our churches here. May we be bold and imaginative in our proclamation of the gospel for the transformation of lives and communities and the building of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you, good Lord, all those who suffer 
in any way, in body, mind or spirit today. And we name before you now in the silence of our hearts those who bear heavily on our hearts today. We remember too those who grieve and especially at this time we pray for the families and friends of Elsa Larkham and Ali Lowe. Gracious Lord, surround with your healing spirit all those who are bowed down. Lift them up on everlasting wings and bring them the knowledge and the comfort of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>